What's up YouTube? Nick here with a really short video and a couple of quick tips for correcting hypothyroidism. I want to talk to you about the correlation between estrogen levels, progesterone, and hypothyroidism. So if you are amongst the 80% of people today that are suffering from hypothyroidism and you haven't quite yet figured it out, this video might be incredibly helpful and be something that could give you another angle for correcting hypothyroidism. So come with me if you want to learn more. So what's the correlation between estrogen levels, progesterone, and thyroid function? This is gonna be short and sweet and right to the point. But really quick, let's do some groundwork and talk about what estrogen and progesterone are. So that way this video makes a bit more sense in the end. Okay, so for those of you that are completely unaware, estrogen and progesterone are both hormones. Now they are often mistakenly labeled as female hormones when they are in fact not specific to the female body. Although the female body might have greater concentrations of estrogen and progesterone, they are again not native to the female body. The fact of the matter is estrogen, although often considered this female hormone that's responsible for everything that is feminine, is actually more or less a class of stress hormones. In fact, if you really dive into it, estrogen's effects tend to mimic all of the pathological changes that occur in aging and disease. But at the very root of it all, estrogen again tends to elevate under stress. All sorts of stressful situations. It is elevated under acute stress, as seen in this study. It tends to elevate under exercise stress. So if you're doing cardio, estrogen tends to rise. And just to drive the point home of estrogen's stress-related nature, estrogen is most chronically elevated during the end part of pregnancy. And what is more stressful on the body than pregnancy or giving birth? So estrogen elevates during all these stressful situations situations to help the body cope with stress. It's just over time, its effects can be very damaging. On the other hand though, we have progesterone. And the word progesterone literally means for pregnancy. It's the fertility hormone. And in pretty much every physiological way, progesterone and estrogen tend to oppose one another. Progesterone is the basic anti-stress hormone. So it is the hormone that both men and women rely on to cope with stress in an efficient way. However, when estrogen levels are really high and progesterone levels are low, we're more reliant on more catabolic and destructive hormones such as cortisol. So it's usually during an estrogen excess in a progesterone deficiency that our bodies produce more cortisol to cope with stress. In fact, estrogen is known to stimulate the adrenal glands to produce cortisol. And in addition to that, it tends to break the communication network between the pituitary and the adrenal glands. So your brain never gets the message from the adrenal glands to stop secreting cortisol. So in this way, estrogen actually can stimulate a chronic stress response and create a nasty, vicious cycle where cortisol is being chronically elevated, which is going to further contribute to a progesterone deficiency. So other than estrogen and cortisol, both being stress substances that are incredibly catabolic and damaging to the body over the long term, an excess of estrogen, which is often accompanied by a deficiency of progesterone, might very well be the major underlying hormonal imbalance that's contributing to hypothyroidism. Which brings us to the primary point of this video, which is how an excess of estrogen in a deficiency of progesterone might be causing hypothyroidism. You see, the hormone estrogen directly blocks your thyroid from secreting thyroid hormone, which can actually be the major reason that somebody gets goiter or an enlarged thyroid, because the estrogen's blocking the thyroid from secreting it, so it's accumulating in the thyroid, where on the other hand, progesterone actually directly stimulates your thyroid to secrete thyroid hormone. So the combination of excess estrogen and a deficiency of progesterone is going to cause your thyroid to not secrete the thyroid hormone. So it's going to cause it to become impaired in this way. It might be the major reason that you are hypothyroid. In fact, most cases of hypothyroidism, the thyroid gland in of itself is completely healthy. It's only impaired or it's not functioning properly due to the excess production of estrogen and the deficiency of the hormone progesterone. So now at this point you might be wondering, well what's causing the excess estrogen in my body and the deficiency in progesterone that's causing my thyroid to not secrete the right amount of thyroid hormone?
don't? Well, that's a pretty loaded question. Although the answers are simple, there are many, many reasons that somebody has an excess amount of estrogen. First and foremost, as we mentioned in the first part of this video, estrogen rises during acute stress. It rises during exercise stress. It rises during pregnancy. In basically any form of stress that you could think of. And plenty of people today are stressed across the board. They're stressed mentally and emotionally. They're stressed socially, financially. They're stressed physically or physiologically. They're stressed nutritionally. They're stressed by their environment. Which leads me to the second major point or reason why people tend to have estrogen dominance, too much estrogen, blocking thyroid function, causing a progesterone deficiency, and causing so many issues, which is their environment. Most people's environments don't necessarily look like this. Instead, their environments look a lot more like this. And the problem with that sort of environment and the environment for most people is that there are endless of estrogen mimicking products in that environment. So there are thousands of different products that are used every single day. Things like plastics, plastic containers that people put their foods in, that their foods come in when they buy them. Most of the conventional skincare products, the personal care products, the various beauty products, nail polish, things like that as well, fragrances, even most common clothing, and even a lot of the various aspects of people's homes, the cardboards, the carpets, the paint. I mean, so many different things. I couldn't really list them all off at one without probably missing a couple. The point is, is that most of these industrial modern products contain chemicals that mimic estrogen. The most common being the parabens, the phthalates, the stearates, things like triclosan and other different chemicals that disrupt natural endocrine function, stimulate the production of estrogen, and once they get into your tissues and they store into fat tissue or in your liver, they act like estrogen. And this brings us to cause number three of the estrogen dominance and thyroid related hormonal imbalances, which is similar to cause number two. It's connected to the environment and that is diet. More often than not, when you live within the modern world, your diet tends to be a product of your environment, right? So this isn't always the case, but more often than not, people of the modern world, myself included, tend to have a diet that's incredibly estrogenic even when it's healthy. Even a healthy diet or eating clean can still put you at risk for tons of different dietary or phytoestrogens. For example, the polyunsaturated fats are incredibly estrogenic and they actually have overlapping effects with estrogen. For example, just like estrogen blocks the secretion of thyroid hormone from the thyroid gland, polyunsaturated fats do as well. They also inhibit the transportation of thyroid hormone throughout the body and they tend to cause cause estrogen to become more elevated in the body because they inhibit the release of enzymes that would destroy estrogen from the body so it doesn't accumulate. So polyunsaturated fats are very commonly consumed, not just by people who consume fast food and vegetable oils and junk foods, but also plenty of healthy oils, things like flaxseed oil, hemp seed oil, as well as uh, various nut and seed oils like sesame oil, almond oil, etc. All these things are also polyunsaturated and you'll find them in all sorts of health food products and they're highly estrogenic. Now there are many other causes of elevated estrogen. Everything from liver toxicity or liver impairment to alcohol consumption, the consumption of certain drugs or medications. There are many other causes but I think that these three that we talked about and to recap that is acute and chronic stress, your environment and all the estrogenic substances in that environment and the diet are major reasons that people have elevated estrogen levels or estrogen dominance and that's what's causing their hypothyroidism. So at this point, your next question is probably, well, what the heck can I do about it? How do I correct the high estrogen and get my thyroid working normally again? I'm glad you asked because I have a couple of tips for you and I'm just gonna get back to the ones that we talked about first. So obviously, the cure is in the cause. So we have three major causative factors for elevated estrogen levels that are attributing to hypothyroidism. So these are three really great places to start. So tip number one is gonna be get a handle on the stress. 
Obviously, handling psychological stress is a long-term goal. If that is your issue, definitely get this book. That book contains a lifetime of mentorship, training, practice, application, of all sorts of mental-related issues and problems. So everything from getting a handle on your mind and emotions, not to mention as tons of other helpful tips in regards to finding and achieving your purpose in life, your goals, and generally being a happier person, all which are major sources of stress for people. So definitely grab that book for tips on handling the stress if you need it. Otherwise, the other two tips are generally straightforward and very practical. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is just optimize your environment. I think the simplest way to look at it, as the saying goes, is to go green or lead a more natural life. In any way in which you can, that's easy and practical, just start to swap any conventional industrial products for more natural products. For example, if you're using a toxic body wash or hand soap, just switch to an organic Castile soap, something like Dr. Bronner's. Pretty straightforward, still convenient, but non-toxic. And then as far as diet goes, all you really need to do is hop online and search the top phytoestrogenic foods. You'll get a list that looks something like this and just start to minimize or completely get rid of your consumption of those foods. However, that's all I wanted to share in today's video. The quick rundown or summary is that an estrogen excess and a progesterone deficiency, also known as estrogen dominance, is one of the leading causes and definitely the number one hormonal cause of hypothyroidism. So getting a handle on excess estrogen and optimizing your progesterone levels is a really great way, a sound physiological way, to get your thyroid back into normal shape. And now you have three very simple things you can start doing and implementing to achieve that goal. However, for those of you interested in learning more about this particular topic and getting your thyroid back into good shape be sure to check out my online wellness academy in the description box below and grab one of my courses which will teach you everything you need to know about healing that thyroid gland that's it for today's video if you've enjoyed it and found it helpful be sure to give my video a thumbs up hit that like button subscribe to the youtube channel if you haven't yet already and of course if you're interested in learning more always check out my blog for free resources and my online wellness academy you can find links to both of those in the description box below until next Next time, I'm Nick. Peace.